So now uh, question number two in this writing, a significant number of people make less than a living wage. So adding to that, uh, soaring house prices and food prices, uh, many people are struggling financially, um, as you know. So what will your government do uh, to make life more affordable for residents of Hastings, Lennox and Addington? Okay, more affordable has two sides to it. The w- one side is we would raise the minimum wage to $20 an hour over our term of office. And that's that's really important uh, because uh, people are really struggling now and wages have not kept up. So they have to, we have to raise the minimum wage. And in the past, governments, uh, particularly the Ford government, has not done that. Uh, and so people are, are struggling. Um, and of course they are. Um, people who will receive social assistance are also struggling. So we would, we would raise the ODSP uh, by 20% immediately on taking office and would double it within the first year. So, so that's, that's the one side, the income side of the affordability pr- uh, problem. The other side of it um, is the rising prices side of it. Now, gas prices are a huge part of that. And um, people have been gouged by uh, the oil companies for many years. And this, I mean, everybody knows that if a long weekend is coming, the gas prices go up. That's just, that's just uh, a fact of life. Um, so, and I think people are tired of this. Uh, the NDP would regulate gas prices. So we would not, we would not have these kind of, this excess profiteering that's going on right now, or the, the, um, the, you know, fluctuations when people need it the most, that's when the price is the highest. Um, so, you know, people have to get to work. This is an essential, an essential thing. So we really need to regulate uh, gas prices and the NDP will do that. Absolutely. And housing, um, we mentioned about housing price, how they're starting to, to rise or fluctuate. But mm-hmm. uh, in terms of, of the actual um, format of housing, you know, tiny houses and duplexes and all this, mm-hmm. uh, do you think uh, that will uh, work or be viable uh, in Hastings, Lennox and Addington? Do you think you'll get the uh, the people out there that are willing to, to buy these these houses? Absolutely. The uh, I, This is called the missing middle of the housing market, where um, large uh, single-family homes are being built because that's where the money is. And uh, so builders can make a lot of money doing that. But the private sector is doing a very poor job of um, building housing that people can actually afford, uh, rental housing uh, that uh, are modest rents. Napanee, the community where I live, used to be a, a community where people could on a modest income, you could rent a modest apartment or you could buy a modest home and live there quite nicely. That's all gone now because of this, uh, this, the rising prices. One of the big things that's driving rising prices is speculation. Um, people who are, are buying up houses, and there are large companies now that are buying up hundreds of homes um, and run them um, for income for shareholders rather than just as a, a individuals buying houses so they can have a roof over their heads. Um, so the, we would tax the speculators and we would, we would tax them right out of the market. So we've got it. We've got to stop the speculation in housing prices so people can, can afford to live. Significant number of people in your writing for various reasons, uh, aren't even making a living wage. what's considered a living wage these days. Uh, add to that, sorry, housing prices, um, life is becoming less and less affordable. What is the... What does your party plan to do to make life more affordable for people in Ontario? Well, one, by opening up the job situation, that'll help. I know there are many families that went from two to one income because of, of the COVID. Um, we need to take a look at uh, retraining some people. We need to make that um, affordable and available. You know, we have skilled trades. We have colleges. uh you know, as it stands now, the current government had put into play the COVID mandates for college, university, work in different places, and then lifted it, but told each company and corporation they could do as they saw fit. Well, the problem with that, the seed was already planted and the processes and policies were already in play. They all need to be lifted so people can get back to work. Um the gas prices have to go down. I mean, any even your local produce comes on a truck. So you're looking at, what, at least 6.8% inflation in April, 
and they were speculating 10% inflation in food. And the price of houses have skyrocketed. Um, sadly, the increase in interest rates that we know are coming are going to help correct that, but that's not the route we want to take. We need to look at affordable housing for people. If someone can afford $1,500 or $2,000 a month in rent and is managed to making those payments for a year, why are they being denied a mortgage? Those things all need to be looked at so people can have a bit of hope and start to look toward the future. You, uh, you mentioned training. Do your, your party have uh, specific plans to help people get the training, especially for things like the skilled trades that are so in demand in this region? I personally am not aware of anything that's absolutely specific, but I know it's in the planning stage and in the works. Um, we have so many things we can offer here, but there's so many barriers and roadblocks that um, a lot of a lot of our constituents just basically give up, and that's unfortunate. It's the same with health care. You know, trying to get in to see a doctor or find a doctor, people just give up, and that's not the way Ontario used to be. In this riding, a significant number of people make less than a living wage. Add to that soaring house prices and food prices, and many people struggle financially. What will your government do to make life more affordable for residents of Hastings, Lennox, and Addington? First off, you know, we're doing everything we can to lower taxes, reduce fees. You know, lowering the uh, tax on gasoline, reducing the fees on license plate tags, things of that nature. The other side of that is improving the economy overall, getting more jobs, more good paying jobs, training our people to in the skilled trades to make sure that we have the people to do the the work and have those jobs. That will bring prosperity to everyone across the board, across this riding. And so that is, is how we deal with the rising cost of living is by making sure that people have good jobs, well-paying jobs, and reducing the taxes and, and the fees as much as possible. Do you have a plan to get affordable and attainable housing built in your riding? Housing has been a tremendous challenge over the last little while. We've seen in the last two years that housing prices have just skyrocketed. And uh, we... The number one thing for that is the supply side. We need to make sure that there is enough land available, that the municipalities are working in partnership with the province to ensure that as much of the bureaucracy is minimized so that the developers have the, the places and have the infrastructure in place to be able to continue to build new homes. We also need to make sure that there's a good mix of homes. We need apartments, we need townhouses, we need single home dwellings. And one of the key factors is that each municipality is a little bit different in how they need to work to build new, new housing. Now, what, what is appropriate in Bancroft and Center Hastings is different than what is appropriate down here in Belleville or over in Amherstview. So we need to work with the municipalities in partnership to ensure that uh, the appropriate setup is going on. So in this writing, a significant number of people make less than a living wage, add to that soaring housing prices and food prices, and as a result, many people struggle financially. What will your government do to make life more affordable for residents of Hastings, Lennox, and Addington? So there's numerous uh, initiatives that uh, our, our party has uh, talked about, uh, things like uh, uh, lowering public uh, transit fares, uh, you know, buck a ride you've heard about, uh, bringing back rent control, um, increasing the minimum wage. But I, I would suggest that overall it's creating a climate where people uh, feel and can genuinely feel that they can prosper. Uh, we need to make sure that uh, people don't have to worry about the basics that, uh, of income security, the basics of health care, the basics of education. Um, people should be able to focus on, on their, their work life, their professional life, their families, and not have to worry about uh, having good public education, having the supports there uh, to support them. We need to make sure that everybody in our province has the opportunity to province or to uh, prosper, not just the upper 2%. So in that case, which is the, the, on which end of the scale do you feel the government can make the bigger impact? People earning more? or things costing less, because that, that, of course, is the two problems, right? Right now, people earn a certain amount, but as prices go up, they can't afford it. Is the, is the way that government can help try to make people earn more 
or try to make things cost less? What I see, and I think this is a core part of what it means to be a liberal, is uh, that we make sure that we have the support systems in place to allow people to thrive. We don't try to uh, control the economy, uh, to do things like regulate gas prices, um, um, or, or to you know, take control of the private sector. Uh, we want the private sector to prosper. At the same time, we believe that the public sector is an asset. It's not simply an expense. It's an integral part of what makes a great society great. So we need to invest in our public sector. We need to invest in our communities. We need to invest in infrastructure and in allow the private sector to, uh, uh, to thrive. At the same time, we need to recognize that there are market forces out there. The reality of life, and I learned this back when I was in high school, you know, this is a long time ago when we talked about the limits of growth and, uh, you know, the Club of Rome. And we knew back in the 80s that, you know, fossil fuels were not going to last forever. So we have to recognize that our, our economy is in transition and market forces, unfortunately, sometimes ebb and flow. And yeah, gas is more expensive. We should and need to reduce uh, our taxes on gas. Um, but there are market forces we need to acknowledge. Mm -hmm. In your writing, there's a significant number of people that make less than a living wage. There's a lot of those jobs. Some of them are there. Some of them are waiting to be filled. And you add to that house prices that are going up, food prices, everything that costs money is going up. What would your government do to make life more affordable for Hastings, Lakes, and Agnes and residents? The first thing is we would attack the housing crisis. So right now we have a demand problem. We would ban foreign purchasing of real estate and farmland in the province completely. It's something that should have been looked at decades ago. We would also be looking at money laundering. There's an RCMP report 30 years ago that showed how a lot of money is laundered into our real estate from criminal enterprises. We need to make sure that we stop that. Our country needs to have more robust anti-money laundering laws. The other thing we need to deal with as well is to balance the budget to stop fueling inflation. Remember, Ontario is the most indebted sub-sovereign state in the world. So we're the most indebted province or state in the world right now. We were under Kathleen Wynne. We're even more so now under Doug Ford. That fuels inflation. The other thing is we're seeing incredible increase in energy prices. We have a plan to cut the provincial gas tax on fuel and the PST. That would save you about 20 cents per liter. We also have long-term plans to promote affordable energy, such as an energy corridor between here and Alberta that would allow us to use more of our own oil here in Canada as opposed to importing it. So looking at those ideas, which would be the most effective is there any one effective idea that will help customers in the long run? Cutting the, the taxes I said off the fuel could overnight change the price by about 20 cents per liter. So that's something that would have immediate impact. Doing a energy corridor between here and Alberta obviously would take years. Cracking down on housing I think is very important. Banning the foreign purchasing, banning the money laundering into housing, I think could have immediate effect on the housing market. And really that's probably the biggest issue we're facing in our riding right now. Housing has increased tremendously over the last couple of years and people need to be able to live affordably to be able to enjoy life and not be stretched to the max.